up until that moment. Not when she was crying, not when his disciples were trying to get rid of him, not until he heard her answer. <laughs> not until he heard her answer did he know why he was there. Rick was up here tonight and he goes through and he's kind of going along and he says, Ah, thank you, Lord. Why? Because in the midst of milling about trying to figure out what his father wanted him to do, all of a sudden a light bulb went off. Oh, that's what you wanted me to do. Okay, praise God. I'll go over there. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 13. Right? I mean, that's about what happened? That's the way it works. Okay, that's the way it works. So he was there. He knew he had the uniform, so he had to get up here. He got up here when ain't anybody else was volunteering to get up here. Or if they were volunteering, probably for the wrong reasons. You know what I'm saying? He was willing to put himself out here in this place and look like an idiot if need be in the hope that his father would deliver unto him in a way that he could understand what he wanted him to talk about. And his father was faithful. Amen? Amen. And Rick spoke it. So the thing about humility, I mean, when we start talking about humility, humility is a place... Um, that's a choice to be humble. It does not come naturally to us. It is not a natural human thing. A natural human thing, I've got a four-year-old over there, who if you'll ask him, will tell you he knows everything. I mean, he'll just, he'll just start volunteering all his wisdom and knowledge about everything. Daddy, you know what this is? You know how that works? You know what this thing is? And do you know that? And no, Dad, you shouldn't do it that way. He's four years old. He's four years old. How much do you think he knows? He can't even read. He can't write. We try to get him to write some things, and he's doing better. Don't hear me wrong. But he's certainly not the source or the fountain of wisdom. Okay? But to him, he sure knows just about everything. And I, and I say this to you because that's our nature. Is to be like my four-year-old is now hiding because I've embarrassed him. Um, but that is our nature. Okay, if we want to humble ourselves, that is contrary to our nature. Okay, and the thing is, is what Rick's talking about there over there, and um, uh, when he was talking about in in Matthew about that which falls on the stony ground, and when persecution arises, they, they get offended and they leave. And he was talking about not the stuff that comes from outside, but the stuff that comes from inside. And he talks about that happens because of pride. He's exactly right. And you know what it comes, how it manifests itself? You know better than the person who's telling you otherwise. You always know better than the person who's telling you otherwise. And so if you know better, why would you ever have to apologize or humble yourself or do any of these things, you know better. You are justified. It's them who are wrong. Now I'm going to finish up here because we're going to go through this quickly and we want to take things, you know, be able to pray for folks and and move forward. But when I came to the Lord, Rick's, Rick was there and Rick's father, there were a bunch of us living in that house and the ministry was pretty good size there um, in Vermont at the time. And Richard said, yes, you can come in and study under me. And he told me, he said, Steve, you are under everybody, including Classy, my dog. He's more spiritually discerning than you are. Okay? That's what he told me. And I found him to be exactly right. When Classy, the dog, would growl at a person, I knew that guy had a problem. I didn't know what the problem was yet, but Classy was very good at picking up those kinds of things. I knew he had a problem, so I was now looking. All right, I'm going to be curious to find out what this guy's issue is. Because Classy has tipped me off to something. He had a little girl named Cheryl, his daughter. She was about six years old at the time. Cheryl would minister unto me. I had a nephew, James, who was seven years old. I mean, after church, he'd say stuff to me. I'd be like, wow, praise God, man. I mean, that was good. I would be receiving from absolutely everyone. Absolutely everyone continuously. And my job was very easy. I had the easiest job, and it was an unbelievable thing. <clears throat> My job was just to serve everybody. You want a cup of coffee? Happily. Oops, you know what? They left some dirty spoons. The spoon rest isn't looking too good. Let me go clean that up so the next person who comes in is going to look okay. And what I found is when you go to serve everybody, 
the Lord would open up like this. Every time I'd think I'd just finished, I'd say, Lord, is there anything else? And I'd spy something else. Other people would be in there watching movies, laughing, doing all these different kinds of things. And I'm in there thinking, they're missing all the good stuff. I just washed that spoon I forgot about. I just wiped up that little sugar spill somebody left over there. I just cleaned up that mark before it got so hard I had to use a lot of elbow grease to get into it. Boy, I just noticed somebody left the toilet seat up and there's some hair under there. Man, that's nasty. But man, let's just wipe that up and so the next person who goes in doesn't have to look at that. You, you follow what I'm saying? My job was unbelievably easy and it was a beautiful thing. I used to be singing, just singing to the Lord over and over again and thinking, my God, I can't believe it's this easy to serve God. This is wonderful. And they're in there watching an HBO movie or something like that, laughing. I mean, you hear the uproars, you know. I mean, you ever be in the other room when somebody's watching a funny movie? And your natural thing is, what do you want to do? You want to run in there and find out what you're missing. Oh, my God, what was that? Hey, hey, hey. You know, we see it with our kids. You know, go in there and do that thing. We start laughing. What was that you guys were doing over here? But the fact of the matter is, is that when you're in that place, okay, I accepted what Richard said to me. Okay, it was not, say, pleasing to my flesh, but I didn't care. When I came to know the Lord, I wanted what He had for me. And the thing that you'll find is this, is that, look, you, gave, you when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, what you're saying is that you believe that what God did for you, that, well, first of all, you're saying that I'm a sinner and in need of a Savior, so you're acknowledging you need help, right? Secondly, on top of saying I'm a sinner and in need of help, and you acknowledge Him and you ask Him into your life, you're trusting that He washes away your sins. And by faith, you're able, He's making a place for you in His kingdom, right? You believe all those things. Well, believe them to the end. That's really what it comes down to. Believe them to the end. Trust Him. You may not understand why a thing is happening. You may not, you may be perplexed. You may be wondering, but trust God. Don't let anyone or anything shake you from trusting God. Because if you will but trust God to the end, you will walk in His power. Okay? You will walk in His power. When you walk in His power, the idea that we're going to be raised from the dead is a small thing. When you pray for the sick and they are healed, the idea that He will likewise raise you from the dead becomes a small thing. You follow what I'm saying? And when you humble yourself, what you find is that God will use you to minister unto the needs of people. I'll share with you one little trick that the Lord showed me when I first came to the Lord, and Richard used to do this with me all the time, and it astonished me what the Lord did with me. And that was, Richard would have somebody coming over to the office to be ministered. Oh, he said, Bob just called. Steve, I want you to come over. So what would I do? I'd go, all right, Lord, I just pray that you search Bob's heart. I ask, Lord, that you guide and direct my spirit in prayer and in battle on behalf of Bob. And I pray that you will move mightily through me to minister unto Bob. And I'd walk over, and Richard would be quiet when Bob would come in. He'd say, Steve. And he would, like, give me the floor. And I was a young Christian, so I'd get pretty excited. And after, you know, pop, 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 battering up Bob and stuff for a bit, he would go, he'd go, all right, all right, all right. Bob, you know what? It's really not quite that bad. He would say to him. And Bob, he would then begin ministering to Bob, and Bob would receive. You follow what I'm saying? But he allowed me to use, because I just did the simple thing of saying, I don't know what Bob needs. What do I know? I don't know what Davey wants me to do when I'm over there. Davey and Richard are the same person, but I don't know what he wants me to do when I'm over there. But look, I'm going to be prepared. Right? I'll just pray, and however I can be of service to the Lord, praise God. What's that to me? And you'll find when you do that, that's an acknowledgement of, I don't know anything, and a call to God for help to be able to carry it forward. And in that, God giveth more grace to the humble and resisteth the proud. And you find that he moves and he ministers through you. And that's why you can come up and stand before people and minister unto them. That's why when people come over and you're thinking, gosh, I have no idea what to do, you can stand there in confidence in the Lord to minister unto them. Okay? Because you're not trusting in yourself.